Welcome to the Collider Town Hall. I am the Honorable Mark Ellis, and this is the show that we do every so often here at Collider, where we like to address some fan concerns. We like to make updates, have some interesting announcements, and then take fan Q&A. We have a whole lot of interesting things planned for you all today. It's a pretty exciting day here at Collider because we have a lot of surprises as well to reveal to everybody watching out there live in the chat room. If you're listening somehow or watching after the fact, we appreciate your patronage and we want your support. I am just a citizen of this city. I'm a villager in this township, and that is why my voice has been tasked as the fourth best host here at Collider to usher in the brass, the head cheeses, the ones that are going to discuss everything and reveal it all. And without further ado, I would like to announce them. Here we have this amazing threesome of Dennis Zen. He is the vice president of development and owns the Dark Knight Nightmare Pop Toy. <laughs> That's actually, is, um, Deb, you already, you already messed, messed this up. whole thing up. Yeah. <laughs> He's not the vice president of production. production. What did I say, development? <laughs> yeah. He's right over there, Christian Harlow. Uh, otherwise, otherwise known as Jeff Johns. Where's the, where's the, where, thanks. Christian Harlow confusing the viewers with New York and Wyoming, both represented yeah. here in blue. And the man, <laughs> the man who is all Already corrected me once today, and it's not going to be the last time. Is none other than the CEO, if I got that oh, one job. right, of Collider, and yeah. he's the long snapper of the 2004 Miami <laughs> Dolphins, Mark Fernandez. That is actually a fact. That is fact. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is a uh, privilege that uh, all you gentlemen have joined us here today. Like I said, we're going to take you all through some of our current slate that we have, and give you any updates that we have on those various amounts of shows, and then we're going to have some announcements for everybody and make some development news and then we're going to hear from you the fans out there i'm moderating the chat room right now where we already have a huge number watching us hello sight and sound amongst everybody else and if you guys want to have your voice heard please the best way to communicate with us during this show is to go on twitter and use the hashtag collider town hall that's where i'll be mining the bulk of the questions from although if you're participating in the live chat i'm going to try to keep up with y'all as best i can well i think the best way to start off this show in this discussion is on a sad note, unfortunately, but it's one that I think we have a bright future, and that would be the legacy of Collider Heroes, the show started by the sweatiest of all of us, John Schnepp, who unfortunately passed away uh, recently. I think that what we all wanted to do here at Collider is first and foremost to honor John and do what we feel like he would have wanted the show to become, and we talked a lot to uh, John's love Holly Payne and uh, Mark I know that there were a lot of interesting um, things that surfaced online about who could take over as the host of Collider Heroes if we were going to have the future of Collider Heroes in good hands and I think that with the announcement of both Coy Jandrew and Amy Dallin I think that we have done just that. Yeah I mean look obviously um, this is all still very fresh to all of us here um, I mean to us he was um, you know, he was a lunch pal. He was somebody that you hung out with after the camera stopped rolling. He was somebody that you texted before the camera stopped rolling. So uh, eliminating that element of our daily interaction is still something that I think none of us uh, have really gotten used to yet or have um, accepted, to be perfectly honest. But I, I do know one thing that 
um, you know, as Amy just walks in and Coy is sitting here and, and all the support that they've given us and, and the legacy of the show is that <clears throat> I know how much the show meant to John, you know, and um, I know that in even the days leading up to him falling ill, uh, this show was his number one priority, you know, for, for good or for bad. I'll, I'll just be totally honest. It's like he was not feeling well and he forced himself to come to the show um, against the, uh, you know, like against the advice of many people around him, like, you know, don't stress yourself out. And he was here because his number one priority, and I, I'm telling you this uh, because I heard him say it tons of times, was the audience. And um, he definitely, I think, left all of us a little piece of the blueprint of the messages and the kind of content that he wanted to create. And I know everybody at this table feels really seriously about it. And I know you do too, Mark and Coy and Amy that uh, we're going to honor, to the best of our ability, everything that we sincerely believe John would want. So that's, that's what we're here to do, and that's what we're going to do. Well, that was, the, that was the main thing, is that we... It, it, the, the, it was a tough conversation to have, because it's a matter of, as of two weeks ago, John Schnapp was the host of Collider Heroes, and you never think anything else. But then life throws some curveballs at you and we didn't even want to have that conversation but going back to what Mark Fernandez said when we really said I know I knew John very well and I and I'm very confident in the fact that if um, I had the conversation and and if he was able to have the conversation he would say the show must go on and I'm also very confident in the fact that he would be excited to have both Coy and Amy hosting the show. He loved them. Um, I talked to him about them all of the time. He, like, Amy obviously was very familiar with and he, she was handpicked by him. Coy um, had really made an impact on him. They had taken drives together to, to, to Vegas and hung out together and, and it, John like took him under his wing. So this is, the, they're both, um, they're both students of John Schnepp and um, it, we, and I'm sure they would tell you the same thing and I'm, I think we're honored to have them, to have their voices, to honor his legacy, to make their show, the show their own in a way too, because that's what also what he'd wanted. So um, I am deeply saddened, obviously, as we've expressed, that John is no longer to con continue heroes, but I am equally optimistic on knowing what Amy and Coy are going to bring to the uh, this this new phase of and, and and I think that John would also be happy to hear that this is phase two of uh, of Collider Heroes and I think he'd be happy to, yeah. to know. And we, we also talked to Holly and Holly has given her her blessing. You know she she wants the show to go on to continue right. Schnepp's legacy and also she's very excited and happy about Coy and Amy both continue on with John and I think you know we still have that deep hole with us in terms of the void that John um, has uh, left us with him being gone, but I also take inspiration from him because of the passion that he's had, you know, ever since the day one we've met him. And I think we can carry that through through heroes and everything else that we do. Yeah, you talk about uh, that, that car trip uh, to Vegas that they all took together in about 115 degree heat. So I think both literally and figuratively, it was the sweatiest <laughs> ride of all of their lives. And uh, I look forward to watching Koi and Amy. And they know everybody in the comic book space as well. So I think you can look forward to a lot of special guests that they're going to have on the show as well. And with Collider Heroes, just in terms of scheduling, can fans expect to see Collider Heroes at its normal date? Or is there any shift been announced in that? So, um... So towards the end of the show, and I'm not sure, and I know that uh, Thad Williams runs a very militant run of show. <laughs> so at some point throughout this program, um, we will uh, release a, a calendar that, uh, that shows all the programming for the week. Um, and uh, it's going to pop up at some point. But yes, uh, uh, Collider Heroes is going to be on Wednesday at uh, we'll, we'll look at the schedule. It's once it's, a week. It's once. once a week. It'll be on once a week, and it'll be on Wednesdays. And again, like Mark said, you'll you'll know exactly when uh, very soon. Yeah, I got a sneak peek at the schedule. There's a lot of logos on there. <laughs> I didn't recognize all of them. <laughs> one I did recognize is in a very new time slot, and uh, it's very amicable with my sleep schedule, and that would be Movie Talk now moving to 4 p.m. Uh, it's still hosted by the same idiot, but I think it's very <laughs> exciting in the fact that we moved to the afternoon 
happened primarily because of two conversations that were had independent of each other. One happened in Las Vegas over so maybe a tequila and a Coors Light, and then another <laughs> one happened here in our home base in Southern California about maybe moving to the afternoon with Movie Talk because that way you can catch all of the movie news of the day as opposed to announcing it in spurts with Collider News and then going over those same topics the next morning. Was that the prevailing logic, Mark Fernandez? Yeah, so look, I think one um, one conscious evolution that we're all as a team trying to do to the channel is become um, a more uh, or focus more on the concept of actually uh, breaking the news as opposed to only reporting the news. I think that that as a mission and a mantra is something that's very important to us so that we can um, you know, be at the forefront of breaking news in our industry. And, you know, this is why we hire folks like a Jeff Snyder, um, some additional new hires that we've done for the site. Uh, folks that are out there, you know, on the beat trying to get uh, the stories in and actually be part of, you know, the breaking news of the industry. As, as you've seen, I'm sure, for the past few months, you know, there's a lot of stories that, you know, we've put out there and we, you know, we're, we're sourcing them, two, three sources, trying to get as, um, you know, trying to avoid the whole uh, fake news thing as much as possible and, and trying to really be a legitimate news source. So that, that really started to also permeate into our Collider News product. Um, and Collider News was, you know, to be frank, Collider News was, I think, potentially um, uh, stealing the the thunder away from Mark and the panel having uh, conversations because we would double up on stories sometimes, you know. Um, uh, Collider News, because it was so nimble and so agile, would get everything first, and then everything was a rehash on, on, on movie talks. We were like, why don't we try to do a win-win situation, get the best of both worlds, still do the Collider News process that we've been doing all the time, but save those stories so that we can talk about it at 4 p.m., on, uh, on Movie Talk, very similar to like a sports center where they talk about the day's news as opposed to yesterday's news. And I have to be honest with you, I, I don't know why we didn't do this years ago. And I don't know why a lot of people don't do this because if you think about it, um, when you put up the news show at 9 or 10 o'clock the next day, it's an old story. And now there's, and back in the day when we were doing, let's say, AMC Movie Talk, we're really one of the only shows that were just talking about movie news. There are a lot of shows that do it now. Um, we get the news, we're reporting on the news, we don't need the news pieces as much to tell the, throughout the day to update the news, we don't need that because Mark and the crew are now, again, breaking those stories, talking about the stories that are coming out that day, and there's that, there's just that constant refreshing. And I know some, and there are some people that I saw that the comments were concerned with are saying, well, I can't watch it live now in the, in the morning, or if you're an international viewer, you get pissed off about it or, or whatnot, you can still watch it on the replay. You can't, that's the, the point is you might, there's, I saw a, another thing from people who woke up this morning were so happy to now when they wake up in the morning they have it at nine because they never used to have it at nine when they wake up. So it, and I've also noticed there's a lot more live viewers coming in on four o'clock now because it's little, it's a little easier. They want to get updated on the stories. So I believe that it was the, the right choice. Yeah, you know why? Because I'm huge in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Australia yeah. has never been happier with us. I currently, in my computer windows, have Sydney, Australia open on Expedia and Oz Comic Con open because now they can watch us live and they're very excited about it. You've been on my all-time favorite content for a while. Look forward to visiting you soon. Christian, back to you. There's one more thing, though, also, because I think that, I mean, this is kind of behind-the-scenes stuff, too, but just I think that they deserve the credit as well. Um, Mark Riley was the producer of movie talk and and by the way it's throwing back to heroes real quick john roca will still be the the producer of collider heroes working with coy and amy as far as the producer of movie talk that was mark riley perry nemiroff will now take that position and work with obviously ellis who is hosting the show and jeff snyder who is like the our number one uh, news source as far as breaking scoops and things of that nature um, yeah, you know, one other thing that I know Mark and I, when we were in Vegas and came back from Vegas, we, we've had a lot of discussions about this. And another reason why we're excited about this shift is that, you know, we're, we're going to make, uh, you know, we want to cast a wide net of voices and opinions to come and, uh, and join the show. Um, folks that maybe we haven't seen before, you know, maybe folks that are active in the industry, um, you know, that uh, you haven't seen on the, on the desk yet, but that could offer varying opinions on, on all these different topics that we're covering. So I know Mark is um, taking that as top priority to go, 
slowly but surely start casting a wide net, bring in some new folks um, that can share their their opinions. And uh, I'm looking forward forward to seeing if. Uh, you know how, how all that works out and seeing some new faces on the show yeah i think um i, I think it's going to be fun and the the future of movie talk is very exciting for me not just because of the sleep thing but also just because it's fun to actually be on camera and announce breaking news with that many people watching it we've already had a couple stories this week that we broke and we were able to talk about because they had just happened so it's exciting um and we already have a, a twitter question in relation to that Anne marie who's a huge fan says uh quarter town hall please bring back ken shanade and josh mccuga more on that in just one second. I miss them, and I'd love to see more female pundits on movie talk like Wendy and Sinead giving their opinions. I think that's just in the vein of what uh, we're talking about, Anne-Marie, so we are simpatico. And when you talk about some old favorites that could return, whether it's, you know, maybe Sinead pops into a movie talk or something like that, uh, one of the things that we wanted to do with this town hall here today is talk about some new shows that we're either looking at doing. And Christian, I know that when movie talk moved from its morning time slot to its afternoon slot, Lot, that leaves an opportunity in yeah. the mornings to do something else. Right. Well, Thursday mornings you'll have um, Thursday mornings. Jedi Council will now move to uh, 10 a.m. So if you want to catch the Star Wars show uh, live, um, you can, we're going to be live at 10 a.m. starting tomorrow. We'll be that'll be the new spot. Friday movie review talk will will be there. So. Um, as you want, you're talking about other other days. Yeah, Monday, about Tuesday, it. Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. We got to find something. Yeah. No, yeah, we, got something something. we got something. We got something. So let's let's go ahead and show the show the logo for the show. Do we have it? We don't have it. We have the whole slate. I thought we had the whole. The, we had the logo. There it is. That's right. I know you guys have been asking for it. So Collider Live has been in the works for uh, quite a while. And if you don't know what Collider Live is, um, Mark Ellis and myself started the Schmoes No. In, uh, in like 2008, 2009, and the evolution of that became a live show that we used to do, the Schmoes No Live Show. It started because we were on Adam Carolla's show and then transitioned into Toad Hop, and then um, it just built and built and built. It became one of our flagships, if not the flagship show that we did. And um, Mark Fernandez was always a big fan of that show. And we, uh, we said, well, what can we do? Can we do a live version of this? And it was always kind of, I always wanted to do it right. I always, I, you can't do that show if it's not done right. And it's, it's different. It's fun. It's not going to be one of these shows. Like I'm telling you right now, when you tune in, um, you will hear cursing when I, when I, when I tell you as far as, uh, you know, Jedi council goes, when I tell everybody, stop yeah. looking at you, yeah, stop yeah, cursing. Sorry about that. Um, that's a sorry. different, that's a different thing. This is a, this is not as Thad says, this is not your father's, uh, movie talk. This is a different type of show. Um, if you go, if you know, familiar with the schmoes, it's going to be, uh, a lot of fun, a lot of craziness. We will talk about movie news on maybe Monday mornings when, um, or the box office and things of that nature differently, very differently from the way Mark does. Uh, there will be some, well, the first thing I should say is it's not once a week. Move, uh, Collider Live will be three days a week, and we are looking at the 10 to 12 o'clock hour every day, Monday, well, excuse me, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Could go to 10, 11, 30 one day. Just depends on what we're talking about. But for the most part, it'll be two hours, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I can give you the uh, Mark Riley, Copster, and Cody will be the three producers of that show. Beardo is coming back to do the sound. Brett Sheridan will be a fixture on that show as well. As far as Ken and Makuga and Tiffany Smith and Roxy, all of them will make appearances. And as it's up to you guys, you watch the show and then we can get more and more people on it. We can build it. But it really, it's a partnership between the team of Collider Live and you. You've asked for the show. You said that we want the show, we want the show, we want the show. Watch the show. If you watch the show, it'll be on for a while. If you don't, then we'll have a, hey, listen, I didn't like that show and, and it's gone, but we're going to put in the effort, the work. It's going to be some crazy stuff happening. Mark Ellis will be on the show at least once a week. Um, there'll be other guest hosts. We're going to have guests. We're going to have games. Um, it's going to be a, a crazy time. What I would say, if you're not familiar with Shmo's No Live, go back and watch some old episodes and you know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah, I'm very excited about this show. We've been talking about this for a long time. But like uh, Christian said, you know, we've always wanted to do it right. And um, we think that having that morning slot where you can sort of look back at the day before and make fun of it and, and have a little bit of fun with everything is something that, 
that morning slot is perfect for. So well, gloves are off. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like again, are off. if I see somebody getting into a fight in the in the office today, if, if Snyder and Roker are fighting with each other about nonsense, you better believe they're going to be talking about it. On it, if I hear about a bad date, they're talking about it. Mm-hmm. Like uh, I'm, everybody knows that it is gloves off. Everyone, will, it's it's like the inside of a Collider that you've never seen before. That's what it is. It's not just so. Just don't tune in for like, oh, it's movie news. No, it's not. It's everything. So I don't want to hear complaints. Like, They're not talking about movies. We might not. We might not talk about movies. We might talk about shoes, but why they look, uh, you know, why, why it looks disgusting. Why someone's wearing these shoes and think it's okay to go out in public. Um, there's a lot of stuff that could happen on this show. So be ready for it. Yeah, I was going to say, Roka uh, admitted yesterday on Movie Talk that uh, he doesn't wear socks and hasn't worn socks for quite some time. We'll I think talk that's about that the kind of topic that we yeah. cover. We'll talk about how he thinks he's George Carlin already. We'll talk about all. Of that. We'll, we'll talk about all of uh, well that's a very exciting announcement I know a lot of people have been waiting to hear uh, the words collider live for a long time and have some sort of meat behind it or uh, shoes and beef in Christian's terminology that's a it's a cool thing and the chat room's lit up and so I know you guys have a lot of questions about that again if you guys have any questions about what we've already covered the things we're about to announce please use the hashtag collider town hall and I'm glad you announced Mark Riley yeah. he's one of the producers of that show some fans were concerned he was fired he was not no he's not producing no. movie talk. No, no. Riley, and, Riley, <laughs> and I, Riley and I go back a long time, and he was. I told Fernandez. I mean, we well, obviously we cleared it with Ellis and made sure that we wanted to make the switch um, and have Ellis. Excuse me, have uh, Riley come with me because Riley knows the Schmo show so well. He knows my vision of what I want to do. Um, the other thing that we should announce is that the the show will debut on August thirteenth, which is um, a week from Monday. So August thirteenth will be our first show. August 13th, produced by Comster Cody and Mark Riley. Mark Riley, a man 39, 40 years old-ish, but his hair 21, and just <laughs> legal now to buy beer. So we move on from shows that you guys know and already watch here on Collider to some developments. And that's not just in context of new shows. Nay, this is Collider, and you know Collider primarily from Collider.com and breaking movie news and movie talks and Jedi Council and Heroes, things like that. But Collider has plans of expanding beyond just the movie space. And Mark Fernandez, I think one of the first things we want to talk about today is the channel that a lot of fans have already gotten very excited about, and that would be the Collider Games channel. Yeah, so obviously you guys know that we're all big gamers here, um, and um, we've had Collider Games up now for about, I don't know, maybe 45 days, a little over a month. Um, We're starting to see some real traction on it. Um, We are already... You know, because of the Collider Halo, we're already giving a lot of the access to the, you know, um, pre-release titles and, and heads ups on really great interviews with developers and, and, um, and you know, creatives in the space. We're starting to make more relationships now with game streamers. Um, and, you know, look, uh, Collider Games is a real thing for us. Um, you know, we're also interested in potentially, and I get really excited about this and really nerdy, but... Um, you know, we might start getting into um, into having our, our own competitive teams out there, you know, um, which is something that's really, really fun and exciting. Um, and, um, yeah, so Collider Games is, look, it's still early days. We don't get a ton of views on, on the videos, but I'm very happy with the content. I'm very happy with that sort of... Um, sort of uh, nascent audience that we have there that's actually starting to come back uh, for every video that we post. And even though it's at the very, 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 very beginning, I see good signs of life. And it's a vertical that we're really excited about. So we're going to keep pumping into it. And Dennis, I know, has been taking a lot more charge with it. Joey Razul has been doing a great job with the reviews and and really caring for the channel. And look, not to mention that... um, even though it's not the folks in this office, we also have two VR games in full development, you know, which you guys will hear about in the coming months. Um, so look, gaming is a huge part of what we do, and uh, I'm very excited that we're starting to create our own voice in the space. Yeah, we have, we have our own uh, weekly uh Collider Games podcast, this is, you know, similar to to movie talk, but a little scaled down. And we love talking about. I love talking about movies. I love talking about television, but I also love talking about video games as well. And th- that's a place where we kind of freely discuss what's happening, what what we're playing, what yeah. other people are playing, some certain news. And it, you and me just did a video yesterday about uh, that v- the Marvel Powers United VR game that you you, you played. Yeah, we, yeah, we just cool talked game. about it. Yeah, and yeah. We you know you played a lot, and we put 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 that up yesterday. Yeah. So look, it's just. It's another thing that we all love talking about, you know, like we love games. So 
we have the ability, why not make a channel, put some resources behind it, and try, try to see if we can build something. Mm -hmm. No, I was just going to say, Dennis touched on the on the podcast stuff. If you want, if you want to see that, you'll be able to go to the Collider Games uh, channel. You can you can check out the show there, and it also lives on Collider Factory, yeah. the the audio version, which we'll get into in a second. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Uh, fun to see a, a new channel like that grow so quickly. I know that it debuted around the time of E3, and a lot of our um, staff here was excited to go. Uh, Dorian, uh, resident heartthrob Joey Razul. So <laughs> there's a lot of interesting things happening with that channel. But that is not the only channel that we're here to talk about today. There's a new channel that I'm excited to learn more about, and that is simply called Collider. Quick. Now, Collider Quick. Quick has never been a term associated with me. Um, I do know the uh, popular breakfast drink with the cartoon rabbit. Yeah. I don't think that's what this channel is about. So what exactly is Collider Quick? So look, uh, I'm sorry, Christian, you want to take it? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Collider Quick, I think that it's one of these things that goes back to the what we were just talking about with the short new news pieces, right? When we were all discussing it, the thing is we're growing so fast and we have all this content and we have all these things that we do on the channel that we felt like this channel that we're on right now, this main channel, that there was a lot on it. And I think that sometimes the audience could get overwhelmed they like the ch they like the stuff that we're pumping out, but there's only so much somebody can watch, and you don't know when the videos are coming in. And there's you know that a certain thing hits on a Tuesday, but then what's this new piece of content? And there's these things that we do, like the the um, something explained or the ending explained or whatever it might be. These um, everything you might have missed. These videos, these short videos that were really working for us, and that we wanted to then say, well, what if we did those videos, but we don't con be too congested on this channel, and we do something just kind of quick fast and we do those types of videos hence collider quick so you're going to go there and find those types of things and it's also there's a chance like we did a lot of great content on awesome tackler when we did that show a lot of um like there were game shows on there there were some sketches that were brilliant that a lot of people maybe didn't catch when it was on go 90 um and now that type of content will not only live there but then new stuff will start to come in out of there. Uh, you'll start to see all these things that we've done in the past that I think sometimes people got confused. They're like, well, is this a movie show or is this a comedy show? Like, what is this? It starts to grow its own identity when it's over a quick, you'll know that there'll be comedy there. There'll be short form content of, of explainers and things of that nature. There'll be maybe top 10 lists that we did. They, 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 the top 10 comic book movies, the short things, that could live there. There's these short form that we've wanted to do for a long time that we just didn't have the real estate to do here that we're going to have at Clatter Quick. Yeah, yeah, very well said. And, um, you know, I believe, um, I don't know how many, which which one started the change.org uh, save um, Captain Learning thing. Um, <laughs> but that's the type of thing. Uh, it was you, Riley? Yeah. 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 <laughs> the guy who wrote it. <laughs> the guy who wrote it, right. <laughs> right. But, like, it, it's to do stuff like that, you know, to have fun with stuff like Captain Learning. To, to have, you know, fun with like, hey, somebody wants to do a video of like every blah, blah, blah in blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, look, Collider, the main channel, we're going to try to really focus it around our news products, long our Genet Council, yeah. our long, yeah, very well said, our long form content, you know. Um, you won't see too many 45 minute shows on Collider Quick. Obviously, you, won't, <laughs> you probably won't see any. But it's, look, I'm very excited about it. It's up there. Subscribe to it. Um, and uh, we'll just, you know, we'll keep it rolling and hopefully we'll start, I think in the next few weeks we're going to start uploading, like Christian was saying, a lot of the awesome tacular content for yeah. those folks that missed out on it. Any of that stuff, like the, I mean, the Avengers stuff that we did, there's a lot of short form, the, the Easter egg stuff, like all, all that stuff that we could put in there, we will. And I believe, um, and if not, the, we, we will add them, but I believe if you go to the description right now, the links for the channels should be in there. If not, we'll, we'll get those updated so that way you guys can subscribe to them right now. Yeah, this is the this is a channel that I'm very excited about because this is something we can experiment with different formats. Uh, something you had mentioned that that Superman mustache mockumentary that, that, yeah, that you all, did. Yeah, that's great. And like, that, thank you for like watching. That, yeah, that one's something great. like that would be yeah, yeah. on there, and we can play around with a lot of different formats, like game shows or whatever, sketches, and, and the things you were talking about. It's a uh, uh, Heated chat room right now talking about Captain Learning. Yeah, so, <laughs> I knew it. The second, he, the second he brought it up, I knew it. And the thing is, too, it's like, but that's that's our point. If you didn't like Captain Learning, right, because it didn't fit over here, or you didn't get it, or maybe you didn't, maybe you did get it, you just think it was funny. 
then you can stick here. You can stay here, and when that episode gets over on quick, you don't have to click on it, you don't have to do anything with it, but if you liked it, and because there were people that wanted to see more things like that, they're gonna live there. There's the comedy side of it, not, and the whole channel's not comedy. There's gonna be comedy stuff, but there's also gonna be the quick stuff, the more informative stuff, and, just, and, and so the other thing that we used to do was um, uh, Crash Course. And I think like Crash Course was, was shorter form stuff that we wanted, we wanted, we always wanted to make it more speculative. We felt that it wasn't as speculative mm -hmm. as we wanted to make it back then. That is something we're talking about bringing back and that's, that would live over on quick. Yeah. All right, well, something that uh, I get reprimanded for on a daily basis is when I'm on movie talk and I happen to make a sports reference, God forbid. So I think <laughs> in that vein, some big sports fans here in the office, and we wanted to take that enthusiasm and, as a matter of fact, we've been able to mold it into its own channel, and that would be Collider Sports. Mark Fernandez, I know that you are a huge sports enthusiast and have actually been publicly speaking about sports for a while in various forms. So well, what was yeah. the genesis of the Collider Sports channel? So, so, look, the real genesis of the Collider Sports is that even though there's no formal announcement, a certain friend of mine, and I'll leave it at that, um, you can put together like, the puzzle, who's also a huge... LeBron. Yeah, who's also a huge <laughs> sports fan, who's, you know, uh, has shown his, his beautiful face on this table before, is also a huge sports fan. We've always talked about trying to launch something like this. Um, for years, I've been a, obviously, I've been a, I'm a Miami Dolphins diehard fan. My friends and I in Miami uh, do this, like, um, you know, we just chat about the games. Um, we also do a lot of highlights on the NBA, and the channel's grown, you know, over years. We're transitioning this channel over to be Collider Sports. Um, and um, our very own John Roca is going to host a show on Monday mornings um, um, with uh, Matt Nost to talk sports, you know, and uh, a bunch of us will be on it. Maybe I'll show up at, you know, Ellis and, Macuga. you know, Makuga, um, you know. We're also going to do like a fantasy uh, football thing for the whole year that Cody uh, is the commissioner. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Like whenever we talk about fantasy He's football, too, man. <laughs> <laughs> whenever we talked about fantasy football, you can always hear Cody saying, "Oh, yep, yeah, that, that's no, that's wrong." Yeah. So Cody uh, sort of uh, is is now the commissioner of the league, and we're, look, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's just going to be hanging out with your friends, talking sports. We're not smarter than Cowherd. We're, we, we're, it's not first take. It's like it's just. Friends, it, it's what we built our reputations on here. Yeah. It's it's the again if we if we threw a sports show on here, it'd be weird and jarring. Uh, maybe some of you aren't even sports fans; you don't care. But those who are sports fans now have a destination to go to to watch these types of tone, the same type of tone you'll see on Movie Talk with Mark. You'll see that type of tone with. I mean, you guys, if you don't know Roca and Nose, you should be you should because not only are they presents uh, presents on Schmodown, but they're also they have a great show in Top Ten. They have a great dynamic. They talk sports on their Top Ten show, and they're phenomenal. At it so that's an exciting show for me because I like listening to those guys just talk about anything. Yeah. So to have them on and we'll have them and we'll have that's another thing that Collider Live will be is that this will be a hub for all of these shows to be able to shine a little bit on our show. So I might want to have Nost and Roka on for like 15, 20 minutes to talk about something going on, what they're working on, or Dennis to talk about Collider Games, and obviously Mark will be talking about movie talk. There's there's a way to now it's a, it's a bigger hub. Yeah, and, and Collider Sports is something that's the most um, early days of all the channels, perhaps. Uh, it's the less developed. So um, even though actually it's the longest running one. Uh, There's one I other have. one that's a little less developed. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about it. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, fine, fine. <laughs> but um, the point is, is that this is one that's actually going to be a lot of fun to build out. And uh, we're going to bring in some people from outside to give it a little bit more cred and and make it a little bit more exciting so yeah collider sports early days but stay tuned okay i said the chat was divided on captain learning they're just outright not fans of the miami dolphins so i don't know what, <laughs> i don't know what it was probably a lot of disappointed maybe they're all bears fans and they're upset at marino ruining the bears perfect season in 85 when marino had that monday night game so that was i don't a know glorious what the issue is glorious the dolphins day. look they're trying as hard as they can they play in the afc east it's not an easy giselle's husband plays in that same division and it's not always a cakewalk so just relax don't beat up on the dolphins beat up on my team because they deserve it. Um, we move on from sports 
to Jedi Council, which is a show that obviously you guys know and love. And we talked a little bit about Jedi Council earlier, the fact that fans are going to get to watch it live uh, for the very first time, at least in a continuous running fashion. Um, Christian, what can we expect from Jedi Council and how does that maybe factor into future things going on here at Collider? Well, this is the last month of Jedi Council. After this, we're canceling it. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, it's on. It's doing, um, it does very well in, on, on audio. We're very happy with that on, on the podcast feed. It does, you know, it's, it's always been a staple of this. It's one of the original shows that transferred over from AMC to Collider. I've been very happy to do it. Ken has been um, has been with me for the last couple of months, and I, I love Ken's one of my best friends, and I love talking Star Wars with him, and we have new guests on all the time, and we're trying to find new voices in the Star Wars community, and, and I've been really happy the way Jedi Council's been going lately in the last couple of weeks. It's just like there's been like this positivity shift that I've been very excited about, and I felt it, and I think that something with the podcast feed, as we were noticing, we are saying the podcast feed has, um, it, it does, you know, between 40, 50,000 downloads an episode, so we were like, well... People want to see more of this stuff or hear more of this stuff. On and when I when I was away at uh, Comic Con, Dennis and um, Mark Fernandez and Riley were on council. But then they also had been talking about doing other side things. And Fernandez and Riley have kind of had this rapport talking Star Wars lately, and they've just been taping these little audio podcasts and. It, he, Fernandez doesn't shut the hell up about Revenge of the Sith and everything's about <laughs> Sith. So he's just so we're thinking that it's it's the the rule of two with these two guys who're just gonna and it's not like Jedi Council where we're ta they're talking about news. They take one topic and they just riff and it's a good audio show. So we're like, well, that's where that will that will be a weekly show. The rule of two with Mark Fernandez and Mark Riley will be on. Um, I don't know when you guys are airing it yet. Have you decided? It's, that? it's Wednesdays, right? Wednesdays. Okay, yeah. so it's Wednesday mornings on the Jedi Council feed. You can, it's an only it's only an audio show, so you have to go and subscribe to either Apple Podcasts or you can. There's there's other ways if you're an Android user, whether it's Podcast One or other ways. You go to PodcastOne.com as well. Chris. Yeah. Yes. So um, so yeah, that's that's one of the exciting things happening in the world of podcasts. And yeah. then you also host the one-on-one -on -one show. Um, is that also something that we can look forward to more episodes of that? Yeah. So I guess one-on-one. -on -one, this can kind of tie into the bigger announcement. If, yeah, if I um, can. So just. Um, so are we off Jedi Council and on to the next? Well, this is one-on-one. -on -one. It kind of leads into where I, where we should go. Do you want me to just okay. announce so, it? So just, just so I can put a little bow on the Jedi Council yeah. stuff, I actually totally agree with you. And um, there has been a, like this shift in the, in, like, in the audience or in that sort of toxicity that was lingering yeah. around. Because people are getting it out of their system finally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and um, I think... Um, Rule of Two has been a lot of fun, and thank you for all the support. Riley and I really come at Star Wars from two totally different points of views, but it's always a really fun discussion between two friends that enjoy hanging out. You yeah. know? So, um, and I've just noticed a lot more positivity as well around the Jedi Council stuff, so all that stuff is great. Yeah. But for the podcast stuff, we launched a podcast channel. Ah, well, that's, you, just, you just gave it away. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm saying no, I'm, I'm talking about the past. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We launched a podcast uh, so channel. So who gave it away now? <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, the no, no, no. We, yeah. we, we, we launched a podcast channel about, what, f six months ago now? Five months ago? About that, five or six months ago. Yeah, yeah. and look, and Christian was always lobbying for it. He's like, I, I'm telling you it's going to work. I'm telling you it's going to work. I'm telling you it's going to work. And um, here we are five months later, and it's working. You know, And it's, it's great. We're doing... Some months we're doing like over three hundred thousand downloads of across all of our podcasts. You know, like more than that. Yeah, yeah. more than yeah. More than I that. mean, like so it, it's been great. I, it's been way more than I thought it was going to be. Um, and um, you know, thank you also to all our sponsors. You know, it's like sometimes it takes six, seven minutes to get to the show because they are becoming very popular and we have a lot of sponsor support. So that's also been exciting from a business perspective. But what's really been exciting is that we've been able to curate all of these programs. Um, and we keep adding to them, you know. Um, and uh, so, anyway, I just want to set it, like, set it up for you to yeah, take and it. I blew it. I blew it. Yeah. <laughs> but you blew it. Um, so, anyway, like, uh, to go off what Mark was saying, going back to one on one, uh, speaking about thanking for support, I am humbled and blown away by the support that I have gotten on that show. It is one of my, the, the I'd say, the most fun I've ever had doing a show. I've had some great guests. Oh, thank you. Uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, I said some of, the, some of the most fun I've ever had uh, because I just, I just, it's been something I've always wanted to do, these long form 
interviews and really getting to know people. And I'm starting to get more to people in, whether it's Jeff Snyder or Sinead or, um, you know, uh, Katie Sackoff, I, people that you guys are familiar with that have been involved in our circle for a long time doing that. But the thing is with one-on-one -on -one at the time, we wanted it to be video and there was only one place to put it on video and that was here on this channel you're watching now. So we wanted to then figure out a way, what could we do if you wanted to listen it to an audio, but you also wanted to watch it. And we're like, well, we have so many more shows that we want to do that for. So we have officially launched the Collider Podcast Network channel. Um, now, why this is also a really cool announcement is because for those of you who may or may not know, um, Mark and I had a channel called SK Plus for a long time. And SK Plus had a lot of uh, programs on there, whether it be Top 10 or the Afterthoughts show um, that is now on Collider, uh, the Schmodown Rundown, Critically Acclaimed, uh, The Meaning Of, all these shows. So for Mark Fernandez and myself and Mark Ellis sat down and we came up with the, uh, with the agreement that we are going to shift over and turn SK Plus into the Collider podcast network. Now, as far as well, where those, where those other shows go, uh, Fernandez was absolutely incredible about all the stuff is, uh, and, and how that'll work, just to let everybody know. If you just listen to the audio, on this, if you're a top 10 fan or Outlaw Nation fan or critically acclaimed, all the audio can still be found on the Schmoes No audio feed. So no problem there. Now, as far as, well, what about, I only watch it on YouTube. Like, I only watch Meaning Of on, on, on YouTube. Every one of those shows that are video, so Schmodown Rundown, um, you know, uh, the meaning of, any shows that are video will stay there. Now those shows have been offered to, uh, to go to video. So if top 10 would like to go to video, they can stay there. If not, they'll just be an audio show. Now why we're doing that is because all of the other shows that we're about to do, that we are doing here or will do here will live on that channel. For example, if you've been listening to the Riley Roundtable on Collider Factory, Riley's show will also now be able to be found on video. And you'll be able to see that on the Collider Podcast Network channel. One-on-one um, -on -one will now live on the Collider Podcast Network channel. The Meaning Of will live there. The uh, Schmodown Rundown will live there. The Witching Hour, the brand new show with Perry Nemiroff and Haley Fouch, will, the horror show will now live there on video. There's The Witching Hour. I love that logo, by the way. So The, the Witching Hour will now live on the podcast channel. Uh, excuse me, YouTube channel. And that gives us the opportunity to create more and more shows. We really, Thad and Dennis have to be commended and, and the production team just really crushing it and turning that studio into a fully functional podcast studio. We have more work to do and we're working hard on it, but it's coming along great. So there's a lot of new material and stuff. So go and subscribe to that channel right now um, so you can be updated because if, you, if you're a fan on one-on-one, -on -one, that's where that show will live, um, I believe, even starting on Monday. You won't be able to find it on this channel anymore. It'll be on the podcast channel. Yeah. So look, there's a lot of expansion here and we're casting a wide net and we know that there's risks to that, you know, of, of like, you know, potential dilution of over diversifying. Um, but these are all very exciting uh, things for me. And like the one thing I learned about from gaming is that um, you know you're headed in the right direction if you're, if you're going towards the enemy, you know? If, you're, if there's no enemies in front of you, there's, then you're not going the right direction. So um, there's a lot of, and, and by enemies I mean challenges, and we have a ton of challenges in front of us, but we're very excited because we're coming at it with a really, really cool team and a big army. Yeah, and also I think this is a good thing for organization. You know what, if, if you're looking for a certain thing, now we're, we have it separated in, in, in different channels if you like a certain thing, or you, you may like two of the things that we do, and, and podcast being one of those things, you know, I wanna set the expectations. Like something like The Witching Hour, it's not going to be a fully produced show. It's it's a, it's an audio yep. podcast show first, which we will have a video component to that people can watch if they want to on YouTube. But that's where it is. The podcast channel and the, that podcast studio right now, it's, a, it's like the hot new thing. We can't stop people from going in there. Every right. time like we try and like do a certain show, it's like, no, 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 this guy, they're, they're doing this show. And everyone's like, yeah. has brand new ideas. And, it's and, booked right? eight hours a day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it's exciting we, 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 now. Yeah. And that's and one of the things, too. Like, what happened like, to Studio B? 
well, B needs work. You know, it's like we, can, we can do a lot. We, it's like, again, we, we start getting some more advertisers and, and stuff of that nature. We can work on B. Um, but the thing is, too, like what Dennis was talking about with the look and feel of the podcast, I kind of like the feel that it's they, like when you see these shows and, and what the great Brian Ward did with the graphics and what the production team does every day with movie talk, that's a different show. Like, I like the gritty kind of just conversational. Like, if you, lo- if you watch the last one on one with myself and Katie Sackoff, that's the type of thing that I want to do because I'm just looking at a person. For, I know some people are like, oh, I wish you were back on the couch. I get so much more out of somebody when I'm looking at them right in the eyes and we're just having conversations. That's what the podcasters will be doing. They'll just be talking to each other one-on-one about horror or whatever it might be. And it, and it's and it's something you guys, if you want to watch the video, you can go there and you can check it out. So that's what we're doing. Like Again, I'm excited to watch like Riley's show. And the other thing that with that podcast channel is there will be things that happen on Collider Live. Like I know there will be, there'll be discussions that are stuff. And instead of piecing out things that happen on the show and making them separate videos on this channel, those separate pieces will live on the podcast channel. Yeah, it's cool. It's exciting. And like I think Dennis nailed it. It, it really is all about organization mm-hmm. and, and about creating more verticalized uh, channels around topics um, so that you can be very confident in what you're going to get there. So um, there is one ch- more channel that I want to talk about that is not on the agenda there. Okay, let me see if we have time. An audible? Oh, yeah, yeah. you're the CEO. No, no, it's not, it's not an audible look. It's something that I'm, um, we're working a lot on behind the scenes. And... Um, but to be honest, I just I, I haven't found the team members to come on board and, and run it, and that's the Collider Crypto Channel. Um, crypto is obviously something that's very very important to me. Um, it's very fundamental to this business and uh, where it's going. And I want to launch a channel that explains or keeps everybody up to date with this world and and um, you know enlightens, illuminates, teaches. And it's tough because I haven't been able to find um, a great um, editor in chief to come on board and really run it from an editorial perspective, from a news gathering perspective. So, to all those folks listening out there, if you know somebody um, who's big into the crypto space and actually has legitimate experience as a journalist in this space, um, we are uh, actively looking to bring somebody on board and become the Collider Crypto EIC. I know this is an awkward place to put it on, but this is this is it. This is our this is our channel. This is our platform. Part of the brand, yeah. Yeah, and um, and I really really want to focus on this. Um, We've been working on a feature-length documentary that's coming together that we showed little bits and pieces of at, at Las Vegas Comic Con, um, that we showed little pieces of um, in Bretton Wood, New Hampshire. Um, and it's really, really fun, and I can't wait to share it with all of you. But yes, EIC, Collider Crypto, we are looking and being aggressive about it. So if you know anybody, let us know. All right, well, uh, I just want to follow up to that guy we met in Vegas after the crypto panel. Remember that guy? He's like, hey, I have a Bitcoin from 2011. What's oh. it worth? He could be sitting on $10 million. We don't know. No, no, 100 Bitcoins or something. Know. He said, no, no, how much did he say? He said he had 1K Bitcoin. 1,000 Bitcoins. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you should have seen Fernandez's eyes go like, wait, because I, I don't know what, what, what it means. And I'm like, oh, it's adorable. You can go get yourself a sandwich at Arby's. Fernandez is like, oh, you could be sitting on $10 million. So, sir, I am willing to ride on your yacht anytime <laughs> you want to voyage onto the high seas. I'll address a question quickly before we move on. Some sure. people heard that the the Schmoes know uh, the YouTube channel. The, the that's the podcast yeah, channel. SK that's, that, that's SK Plus. Yes, not the main that's channel. Not it. The Schmoes know is not dead. We're very no, comfortable no, no. in our perch of the ninth most popular movie reviewers on YouTube, <laughs> and we'll have a new review up as soon as we're allowed to talk about the Meg. Did we like it? Did we not? <laughs> We'll talk about it, <laughs> but not before I address Aaron Curtis's question as well. She has a tongue-in-cheek query, and she says, Ellis, will there be a flow chart to keep up with all these announcements? Well, I can do you one better than a flow chart. How about a sweet graphic and a schedule of our fall calendar? Here we go. Look at all those logos. Beautiful. Just, uh, just gorgeous. Because you see there, like Collider Live is going to be, to reiterate, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And that's from 10 a.m. PST all the way to the noon hour, most Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. And then you also get your live feed on Thursday and Friday with Jedi Council going live and Movie Review Talk hosted by Scott Mance. So adjust your headphones accordingly. That will also be live. And don't forget about Collider Mailbag every Saturday and Sunday. And then we have Movie Talk Live. As we mentioned, 4 p.m. in the PST. Obviously, the movie trivia showdown. Commissioner Thad Williams. Is he doing a great job? He seems to be in count 
Schmowski's pocket, as far as I can tell. But <laughs> we do have our team schmodown every Tuesday and our league matches in the singles every Friday, unless it's a special tournament. You guys may want to pay attention to all the things going on in the movie trivia schmodown, including the live event September 8th, and then obviously Collider Heroes atop its perch every Wednesday at 1 p.m. PST. Well, um, something else that's a new addition around here at the Collider Studios is just a very nice man with a fantastic beard who followed me on Twitter, and I'd like to introduce him to everybody. Ryan, why don't you say hi to the gang out there? Hello, everybody. Ryan Satin from Pro Wrestling Sheet here. And um, you recently just um, got ingratiated into the office here physically. Can you just quickly explain the process of how your wrestling channel and your website became a part of this fun space that we know and love? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I met with Mark recently about joining the podcast network when it was still in the works. And when I did that, you know, I explained to him some of the things that I'm about and some of the things the website is about, you know, fact check news, uh, putting effort into all the articles to make sure it's not just text on a page, uh, and just all the stuff that we've been doing to kind of shake some shake things up in the wrestling news world. And when I told him that I needed help in terms of video, audio, uh, just everything, because it was really just me and a few other people doing things from my apartment and from a small studio to do the audio, uh, the show that we do every week. And, and Mark was really passionate about it. Dennis was, so was Christian, especially, you know, Christian's background with WWE and, and uh, just the schmo, the schmo nose and schmo down, all the wrestling factor that goes into the schmo down. So, um, I'm really happy to come aboard. I mean, I, Collider is something that is a website that I have followed for a very long time. I'm a huge movie news fan. Uh, I'm a huge TV guy. I've grown up watching TV. I've grown up around the industry. So I follow movie and TV news uh, very intensely. I'm a big fan of it, So more so than sports. So when the opportunity arose here, uh, I, I, I jumped at it. You know, I, I'm, I'm so used to doing everything with a few small staff members that I have, uh, begging them to help me, basically. And so now that we're here with an actual staff of people who know what they're doing, Dennis, Christian, uh, Frosty, everyone here, you, everyone, I, Thad, I, 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 I'm so thrilled uh, to, to take Wrestling Sheet into the next uh, phase with the Collider team. Yeah, and I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, part of that is that one of the other things that Ryan had a, had a YouTube channel uh, and still does, and now that's part of the Collider brand as well, and that also should be in the description of this video. One of the things, John Roca, who is a wrestling fanatic, will be helping Ryan, and as far as, a lot of people were wondering where Body Slam went, and now Body Slam was the, our wrestling show before Ryan came on board, and that, that lived on Collider Factory. Well, Ryan's gonna have his entire feed, entire wrestling feed for a pro wrestling sheet, where you can find all of these programs, the show that Ryan does, Body Slam will now, who is now turned into a show where they're gonna recap Raw, they'll recap SmackDown. Aaron Turner will have his own show, I believe, with yep. Jay Washington on the Yes, yes, so basically, we're, you know, I was, this whole time, I've only been able to do one show, one weekly audio show every week, that, and, and I've been wanting it on video. I know that my co-hosts are characters that come across much better on video when you can actually see their faces, and so when I came here uh, and found out there was already an audio show that people enjoyed here, uh, I started listening to it, and I love the voices that Aaron Turner and John Roca have, uh, so being like the heel GM in wrestling <laughs> mode, I kinda had to do a little bit of a brand split and break them up a little bit, because Roca's here in the office with me. Uh, we can record a recap every uh, every Tuesday for Raw and every Wednesday for SmackDown, which we've done the first one this week. It was on video. You guys can check that out on our you know on our YouTube channel, Wrestling Sheet. Uh, well, there'll Wrestling be more Sheet. stuff on that YouTube channel also as, as we get for because Ryan's only been here a couple of weeks now, and I can tell you already, um, he is one of the hardest working people that I that I met. He really puts a lot of work into that website and this channel. Um, the channel is with our help in the YouTube space. We're going to be doing and more stuff. I, we've been talking about what would be great is, you know, the greatest matches of all time or who the hottest wrestlers are at the moment, um, who's people to watch and like these short form videos that could live, that will live on that channel that he now has the support to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, the whole time I've had the site, you know, because I worked in TV prior to running a website, uh, the quality of video is really important to me. So I didn't enjoy shooting stuff in my living room. So that's why the, the video content uh, was so small the whole time. And now that I'm here, I mean, you guys know so much more about video than me and how to build a successful YouTube channel and to give the fans what they want and so I'm really happy to have your guys lead on this one because I mean this just the stuff that we've put up in the past two weeks alone has
has been getting lots of views. We've already gone up a few, uh, like five, I want to say like 500 uh, subscribers. So things are rapidly happening. So if you guys have not been aware of what we've been doing yet, please go check out our channel. Go check out our audio feed. Go check out the website. I promise you, you're going to like what you see. It's, uh, it's, it's wrestling news that you can trust. And a lot of times in wrestling news, you can't trust it. You feel like, oh, well, I hope this happens or it might be BS. Well, I can guarantee you the stuff you read on my site is stuff that you can trust. And I put my heart and soul into it. The user experience is very important to me. Yeah, Ryan is definitely a voice you can trust. He is so loud that he actually turned the mic off Christian. So that's a pretty <laughs> impressive feat to do. Um, Ryan, your enthusiasm reminds me of a young Mark Ellis back when he had dreams and goals. Uh, Mark Fernandez, is that one of the things that attracted you to uh, get into a partnership with this young Yeah, Mark? yeah, um, absolutely. Um, and this is, I think, a lesson to myself and to folks out there. Um, as Collider is going on a real mission of expansion, um, that means that we're going to acquire new channels like we did with Pro Wrestling Sheet, uh, new websites. And what's that criteria that I look for when we make those kind of approaches is, and you nailed it, Mark, number one is enthusiasm. Like the person needs to be enthusiastic about what they do. They need to have a, a clear-cut passion about what they do. Um, put that at the tip of the spear. Um, so that's number one. Number two, you need to actually be able to put that enthusiasm and passion, like Christian was saying, into tangible work, right? To have actual output. And Ryan, uh, to his credit, has built up a, a really substantial audience on his website um, to the point that I was just like, Wait a minute! You're doing this with how many people? And, and like, I was in the room. That's confirmed. He did say it like that. Yeah. <laughs> he was like on his computer like, yeah. while I was telling him, and he looked it up. I was wasn't it? Like, yeah, <laughs> it was like that scene in, uh, in in Django. Like now you have my attention, you know? Because yeah. like I was like, well, how big is the, is the site? And I'm like, wow. So anyway. Look, that's what we're looking for, and, um, and and I'm so happy to have Ryan on board, and since the day uh, that Ryan has joined, he's brought a whole new life to the company, and I'm really appreciative of that, so Thanks, it's going to be, it's gonna be big, big stuff. All right. Thank you uh, for joining us here, Ryan, and uh, before we welcome in the uh, founder of Collider.com, Stephen Frosty Weintraub, I want to remind you guys once more that uh, we're going to save some time at the end of the show for your live Twitter questions, and I'm going to speak for the chat room as well, getting some questions out to the panel. If you're on Twitter, use the hashtag Collider Town Hall to get your voices heard, and I'll do the best I can to be a mouthpiece for that. And in the meantime, I want to welcome in Frosty, who uh, was kind enough to let me go see the Meg on Monday. That's the latest in a number of privileges you've afforded to me personally, so I thank you for that. Um, your take on all the things going on here at Collider Video, and what can we expect in the future from Collider.com? Uh, well, first of all, I'm so disappointed with the way everything's been announced. I am going to be uh, leaving Collider. No, that's <laughs> no, joking. a, that's so a bombshell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm so joking. First of all, we can talk about the Meg. I think people on social have started tweeting and saying things. Uh, and what you were uh, talking about a second ago, we were at the ArcLight the other day. But uh, we can, I think we can talk about it. As far as Collider. Now, but yeah. Right. Uh, as, no, no, no. Hold on. I want to talk to this shark. Are you watching? Uh, as, far, as far as Collider, um, I said this, I think, at the last town hall, and I'll say it again. I think that um, the site grew immensely because of our partnership with Complex, but I firmly believe that we are at the best we've ever been. Thank you, Mark Fernandez. Uh, because we now have people leading who firmly believe in the Collider brand and are passionate about, I mean, everyone who's watching right now must have, you must realize what we have behind the scenes cooking up and what we're working on and that we're not slowing down uh, and that there's just a ton of new energy here and I'm incredibly optimistic and excited and um, I know that most of this meeting thus far has been about uh, video, and it should be, uh, but I'm here representing the dot-com. Our traffic on the dot-com has never been higher. Uh, we've never broken more huge scoops between myself and Jeff Snyder. Uh, I mean, not, I, I, don't, I like being modest and not you know, um, sh shining too much of a light, but we broke you know, myself, the, one of the biggest stories of the year, which is, you know, Andrew Lincoln leaving Walking Dead. The list goes on and on of the things that we've been breaking and mix that with all the stuff that we're producing here. It's just, it's, it's just an amazing place right now. Uh, we recently hired Vinny who, uh, uh, to work full time on the website and uh, we've been, you know, we crank out a new feature every single day on the website. And like I said, traffic's never been higher. I super appreciate Adam, Matt. 
Dave, Haley, Allison, Vinny, uh, for the incredible work that they do and for everybody in this room for the long hours and the hard work that everyone does here. Uh, there's no weak link in this room. Yeah, look, um, so first of all, I can vouch for everything that Frosty is saying. Our traffic has never been higher. It's it's almost reaching 35, 36% higher than it's ever been before, which is very, very impressive, and it's a testament to the team that um, has worked pretty much seven days a week, eight hours a day, 10 hours a day, and that's why we did hire Vinny, so Vinny could uh, be more of the weekend guy. So we have coverage seven days a week. Uh, I'm very, very proud of it. Um, and um, yeah, we're, you know, we're transitioning more into being um, a news site, a serious news site, which has certain responsibilities, right? If you're a journalist, you got to go out there and hunt the stories. It's actually a lot more fun to hunt and aggregate anyway. But um, I'm very proud that you've taken that mission um, to heart and actually um, had some results around it. And look, last town hall, we talked about we're going to hire, we want to hire, we want to hire. Uh, I don't want to say the exact number of people. We've hired a lot of people, you know, and, um, you know, um, I'm very proud to say that the team that we've built here, I think, is very focused, and uh, the results have been showing up. Um, I also want to give a little shout out that I'm talking about our new people to Dorian Parks, um, who's doing our social stuff, who's brought an incredible um, new perspective into the company, uh, some incredible humor as he calls himself on his own birthday post, uh, the real MVP. <laughs> um, you know, he, uh, he's, uh, he's awesome. And he's brought incredible passion, uh, you know, to uh, the shows, to our, to our news product, to our, our Twitter, to our, to our Instagram. And I love that kind of stuff. And I want to build on stuff like that. We just made a, a, some other new hires that we'll be talking about soon. But yeah, things are, things are happening here. It's not without its challenges, but there's definitely more progress than there is uh, step, steps back. All right. Well, without further ado, let's hear from everybody out there watching right now on the live stream, whether it's in the live chat or it's on Twitter using the hashtag Collider Town Hall. Our first one uh, comes from Anthony, and he says, I know sponsorships are extremely important, and so are having views on all the videos. So as he points out, a podcast is usually audio, and he listens to his podcast in audio form, so he's not giving you views. So he asks, are podcasts actually hurting the YouTube shows if you're just listening to it and not watching it? No. Uh, what I have found over the years doing this, there are two completely different audiences. Um, now, that's not to say that some of the people who watch, who are subscribed to the video don't do audio also. Of course that happens. But there are a lot of people who just consume our content through audio. And that was one of the main reasons why I made such a heavy push to create the, the podcast network. Because when we just had it in that one feed, it, it people didn't know how to find it. Very similar to what we did here today by expanding off into other channels and video. So, no. I, you, you consume the however you consume it because it you're either adding a, a, a another listener to our audio or you're adding another view to our videos so however you do it we're appreciative that you're just taking it in one way or another it's your preference and your prerogative to do that however you want yeah and you can mix it up too like yeah. I, I do that myself I, I watch certain videos on YouTube and then I'll listen to certain things on audio podcasts yeah. and and also the podcasts that we have sponsored podcasts as well yeah and, and from a business perspective no it doesn't hurt um, the way that the podcasts are monetized or, or totally different than the video so they're complementary it's just about expanding the brand and, and servicing different types of listeners so it's a good question and as long as you're yeah. watching movie talk live and then watch it again afterwards and then listen to it the next morning I <laughs> yes. think we're gonna be just fine mike killmonger is next up and he says so will collider gaming or collider games be playing new games later on this year he's specifically asking about new games that have been announced like red dead redemption 2 spider-man oh. madden 2019 star wars battlefront 2 clone wars content christian looking in your direction for that one assassin since Creed, uh, FIFA, NBA Live, all these games that are slated to come out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I already pre-ordered my uh, Assassin's Creed uh, Odyssey, which I uh, will be playing. And, you know, Red Dead Redemption 2, we're, we're going to do all of that. We're going to cover all the new games. We're going to talk all about all of them because we're excited about them. Yeah. Um, and look, we're also going to, like, just like how Mark and I uh, have talked about bringing in some, some, some new faces to discuss movie talk, we want to bring in a bunch of new faces to play games yeah. with us. You know, folks that have some followings that can bring a little bit of of extra punch to the channel. Um, I'm actually seeing one uh, our new director of digital development walk through the room. 
Um, he's going to be responsible for helping me do that. Is that right? the guy that brought donuts this morning? Did like he bring donuts? Because I didn't he was, get one. He was told to bring donuts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, and uh, you know, look, we want to we want to expand the gaming channel. Um, we've built a good uh, you know some some good scaffolding. Now it's time to leverage our relationships in the industry, bring in some new voices, bring in some streamers. Uh, have more content on it. So yeah, to your question, absolutely. All those games are going to be played, and most of them have been pre-ordered. And the other ones, we we're talking to the publishers about yeah. sneaking in there and playing it beforehand. So I mean, I'm known as the world's greatest uh, Game Boy Tetris player. I'd also be interested in Tecmo Super Bowl if we ever stream that <laughs> on Twitch. Frosty, are you a uh, you a gamer at all? I I used to be a hardcore gamer, and but I have found that all my time, and it's sad to say, is eaten up by, there's so much, and I think everyone out there, and all of us agree, there's such an abundance of amazing television, and so many streaming channels, and so much content, that I'm trying to be solely focused on delivering the best content to Collider, and since we don't really cover games on the site, I've moved away from being as active as a, a, of a gamer, just to be a better person with TV and movies. Translation, he's scared as shit of young people. <laughs> no, but I mean, I mean it's, not, it's understandable. That same thing happened to me, and that's why luckily now we're doing the Collider Games thing. I tell my girlfriend, oh, no, 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 no. Right, I'm working. Work. I'm working right work. now. So. Right, right. Yeah, just Frosty, you gotta cut out those weekly trips to Brazil. You'll free up a lot of time to <laughs> play more video games. Um, um, Chillmonger's next up, and he says, what's your super chat policy? Will they definitely get read aloud, or is it hit and miss or ignored altogether? Well, it doesn't seem like an issue now, but um, eventually you're going to get flooded with them. Well, we're going to be doing it. We're going to be trying it a lot on live, um, the super chat. something we've been discussing, for yeah. sure. Look, right now, uh, super chat for us is not something that we actually even think about, to be honest. Sometimes we, th sometimes we think it's off, and it's actually on. Like, it's not... It's not something that we really use consciously, but I know that Christian's been talking about actually trying to leverage it to actually better the show. Yeah, I think live, um, it'll benefit, I think that it'll give people uh, a reason to do it more when we, when we take that segment of live. Remember, we have three days to fill, and one of them might be yeah. just questions well, look, will, from it. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no, sorry. Um, I will drop a bomb right now. You guys are ready for this? All right, hang on. Buckle your seatbelts. <laughs> <watching it up. laughs> no, but I won't like what's coming. We, we are going to do some content on YouTube. I can't say which one of the channels yet, but that will be uh, premium on all levels. And we are going to experiment with having our kind of, you know, uh, a, like more mature audience, MA rated type content that you will... Uh, you know, do the premium thing for, which will be kind of like sit, you know, uh, uh, sort of like HBO and Showtime back in the 80s when you would watch Friday the 13th for the first time or, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street that you knew this is where the adults hang out. We are going to try to push that kind of content. We're still developing what the, what the piece is, but I'm very excited um, to actually try that to have a model that's based on premium content and a premium audience that pays the extra money to watch that premium content. It's a very exciting new model that YouTube is starting to yeah. roll out, and it's something that we are going to be experimenting and, with. And to be clear, it's not any of the stuff that we already did. It's not. It's not like you don't have to. You're not going no, no, to no, pay no. movie. It's none of the current no, stuff. you're not going to have yeah, to yeah. pay movie talk or Collider Live or anything too. It's not like it's not it's stuff something that, you're like, that we oh, haven't wait, talked about. Yeah, yet. I was accustomed to all this. Now I got to pay. No, no this no, is no, something no. right off the bat that if you choose to go. By behind the, that paywall, you can. Um, but if you're, it's not interested, then just stick with everything yeah. else we got going and, on. And to be clear, right now we're talking about only one show that's never been talked about. Uh, there's been no announcements around it. It will be an experiment. Everything it's that we early do... early development. Yeah, everything that we do is 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 free, will we'll, we'll remain free. Um, this one show is an experiment, and once things start coming closer to it, I think you'll be pretty excited about it. Well, luckily, we have a suggestion for the name of that show already. Okay. And they include Collider Triple X, <laughs> Scrambled Collider, Collider Bad Words. Get your mind out of the gutter, everyone. It could just be a bunch of scary short films like Nightmare on Elm Street, like The Shape. I've seen it, Copster. It's really good. Congrats yeah. to you and the team. Uh, we move on to our next question, and that is one that I've actually seen uh, super chatted here. I've seen it in the regular chat room. I've seen it on Twitter, and it is in relation because we're talking a lot about how we want to get new faces on, on movie talk and more diversity of opinions and all that kind of thing. Um, but there's also returning favorites, uh, particularly in the world of Collider Heroes. A lot of fans are asking if Robert Meyer Burnett is going to be back on Collider Heroes anytime soon. So I, um, I've spoken to Rob Meyer Burnett twice during this very, very, very difficult time both very extended conversations. 
I've let him know my feelings is that I absolutely want him um, to be on the show and um, you know to share his opinions about comic books and all of his passions. Um, I think Rob and I need to just have a, you know, uh, hopefully have a, a, a talk very soon so that we can just set a date. I mean, that's the way I'm looking at it. So, um, uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, Rob and Burnett was a very close friend of John Schnepp, and they did the show together uh, many years. He is a, I believe he's a staple of Collider Heroes, and I think that he should be on the show, and it's just a matter of um, having those conversations. I'm just coordinating the time. I mean, from my perspective, anyway. All right, uh, Chris Jones is next up, and uh, he says, uh, is there any chance that the commissioner, Cody Hall of the Fantasy League, <laughs> would allow a fan team to somehow well, get in the mix? So actually, it's really, that's, first of all, it's a great question, because we've been asking that question internally for a week, and we've been trying to figure out how can you do a fan team? If somebody has a suggestion of how to do a fan team, that is the ultimate thing that we would love to do, is have one team be fan run. I just don't know how we could do it mechanically. So if anybody has an idea of how to do it, man, we would love that. And we're gonna have the live draft uh, on Collider Sports. Cody, of course, will be the commish. Um, you know, everybody will be here. I know Dagnino's gonna make an appearance. <laughs> Gotta help you all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Alice, will, you know, will, will, will be with us. So, you know, look, it's, it's something that we're really looking forward to. If somebody has a, an easy way to have a fan run team, Man, that would be awesome. Please let us know how to do it. Uh, I have an easy way. You can just meet me at Panera across the street, and you can help Hog Diesel yeah. march his way to another victory. I know Cody's the commissioner, but I'm going to be, in the words of his favorite quarterback, eating a lot of victories this <laughs> calendar year. Our next question, we always get these when we do Town Hall, and I love asking them. I don't know the answer. It's from Alex Sandoval. He says, is there a chance we get a weekly TV talk in the future? There's so much great TV out there that they want to hear discussion on, and I think I speak for everybody that I know it, it, it would have meant a lot to John and meant a lot to Holly to have so many members of the TV Talk community back here on set together. That was a really special moment and a really sad time. Um, but as far as the future of TV Talk in general, do we have any uh, movement or any bombs to drop on that? Well, I guess I can pick up the piece and drop a bomb as well, too. I think one of the things that we, um, we, we've actually been in conversations uh, for a while to bring TV Talk back, but we'd bring it back. It would, it would live on the um, Collider Podcast Network, and it would live there with um, what we want nothing is nothing set in stone yet but Josh McCuga would return to do that the show would be different than it was before um, I can say who his co-host was going was to be right we talked about it it was going to uh, I mean you know look all of this stuff right now is stuff that we're trying to figure it's, out it's, it's not, yeah it's just, it's yeah. just talks nothing nothing's in, uh, like him and Thad Williams would do a show with guests and it would be more of talking about the stuff that's happening in TV news and things of that nature and not just reviews and recaps of shows and it would be a weekly show. Um, we're talking to Josh about it. We have been talking about it. We, we've been waiting for the podcast YouTube channel to launch. It has launched, so we're hoping that those talks will ramp up. Yeah, and also, um, I just want to, this is something very serious. Um, Josh has an active campaign to be the next host of Jeopardy. Yes, he Trebek, does. Trebek is, um, is thinking about stepping down. Um, In 2020. It, right, like yeah. soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, we're all we're behind it. We fully endorse Josh McCuga as the new host of Jeopardy. I don't know. Did, did Josh make like a petition thing or something? So, he just did a retweet, and a lot of people retweeted it. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so look, maybe there's nothing. That is, that is formal. petition these days, though. Yeah, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. There's nothing formal out there, I guess. But yeah. if there is, let's all rally up and get him on. Yeah. At least to have like a, like an audition or something. Right? Why not? Yeah. Um, there is a lot more than just a tweet. There's a full launched hashtag. Oh, Josh Mc hashtag Josh McCuga for Jeopardy. Yes, Perfect. Josh and McCuga the four for is the four like the. Is Jeopardy <laughs> spelled right? Uh, Jeopardy <laughs> is spelled correctly. <laughs> good. Yeah. Good. He'd knock it out of the park. Right, that's good. that's yeah. the goal that we talk about often. Is I yeah, would but take over for Pat Sajak and he would take over for Alex Trebek and we'd be back together on primetime TV. You get yeah. so bored with that job, you'd be done after a week. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ajax and Fagan for 40 years. I think I can do it for a little bit. All right. Well, our next question is uh, it's. It's another one that uh, we, you know, enjoy talking about um, sports, but I don't know if this sport is necessarily going to factor into the future of Collider Sports, and that's JoJo. He says, uh, will we ever see them talk about English football, which I hear is also so known as soccer. All, so, so first of all, uh, I can almost guarantee it, 
because John Roca is a huge uh, yes, he is. soccer fan. He will be the host of the show. I'm sure when May comes around, and look, I- I'm I'm a old school soccer fan, even though I don't follow it as much anymore because I used to live in Venezuela and it was a lot easier to be into it back then. But um, you know, when the Champions League is rolling around in May, I mean, these are prime soccer times, and I'm sure that that will come up. The LA Galaxy has a great team. I'm I'm pretty confident that yeah, like there'll be some soccer talk if if you have Roca up there. Um, All right, maybe John Roca is the reason why uh, the United States can get into the World Cup the next time it comes around. Fingers right. crossed for that. Uh, Jedi DMF is next up, and he says, "Will there be another top fifty list?" Uh, so look, we we love doing that show, um, and it was just a lot of work. It was fifty episodes at ten at ten minutes long. I mean, it was like an exercise in endurance production, um, but we love the format, and we are talking about doing the format. Um, again, in a different version, maybe a much shorter version. On quick. On, on quick, on, you know, um, but yes, we are talking about doing one actually coming up for, I'll drop a little hint, for October. So. All right, that was a hint, not a bomb. <laughs> right. Right. Just, right. I'm not sure everybody in the panel knows the difference between yeah. a hint and a bomb, so there we go. Um, our next question comes from Charles Watson. He says, will we be seeing a Collider Presents uh, at some sort of panel at an upcoming convention, uh, like in L.A. Comic Con, New York Comic Con, Long Beach, et cetera, stuff like that? So, um, so look, the answer would probably be yes, because we love – Cons, we know that that's the way to connect with our fans. Um, you know, that's another thing that Schnepp taught me is how important that sort of grassroots interaction with the fans is, um, and that it's not just isolated to San Diego Comic Con, but that there's Salt Lake City Comic Con, that there's Amazing Comic Con, that there's New York Comic Con, that there's all these different festivals of the stuff that we love in fandom that you have to try to connect with the fans on. I know we're sending a contingent to Star Trek uh, Con this weekend yeah. in Las Vegas. Uh, Perry Nemiroff and Dennis will be there. Scott Mance will be there. Um, you know, will we do more panels? Hopefully, yes. You know, um, I've also, and you know, maybe we can even start this hashtag if that's what the kids say these days. But we we want to potentially start ColliderCon. You know, what does that look like? You know, um, where does that live? Bahamas? You think? <laughs> Hawaii. 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 <laughs> to, be, to be honest, I'm thinking Vegas. Um, I'm out. Because no, I mean, look, Vegas um, is a very has has newfound sp- special meaning to me, um, and um, and maybe that's that's where we plant the flag for it. So we we have something with a, a convention that might be announced in the next day or two, uh, but it's not going to be the panel the way that this person's looking for. But it's going to be something that that could be pretty cool. Um, maybe tomorrow it could be announced. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's do two more questions, and then I think we'll call it a day. And obviously, you guys are free to either comment or tweet us anytime. Let us know what you thought about all of the town hall announcements. What are you most excited for? What do you want to ask more questions about? We'll follow up as best we can. Sorry to interrupt you, Mark. Have we gone to the Jay Williams and uh, Ryan Smelling questions smelling yet? Smelling? Oh, smelling. 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 That's going to be that's a 30 minute segment. That's definitely going to be on that show. Hold on. Have Poor we gotten to their questions yet? Our, our beloved <laughs> host of After Smell. Uh, I, I, I don't think uh, that I would be in my right mind if I was ignoring Ryan and Jay, kind of okay. saving them for the end. Oh, but, okay, um, okay. Fine, fine, fine. You know, I just wanted it, to make sure we got their questions. Kind of way the town hall has been run, let's just put horses before cars. He just wanted to insult one of our hosts. <laughs> Look, um, if, and Jay Williams, if you guys haven't off. been listening to it, um, it's a great show. They're they're very very critical of us yeah. and everybody. In a good way. And like, what what's your what's your saying about uh, it's, it's effortless. It's effortless. Everything yes. we anything new that we can do is effortless. Yeah. and but, easy. But, but to be fair though, they also they also re- they break it down from a fan's perspective that is very helpful. To be honest, with oh, you. Yeah, if you're yeah, not yeah, listening to it on um, on the movie talk feed, Ryan and Jay have been um, putting in their blood, sweat, and tears in this show. It is a very entertaining show. It is it, again, like I said, helpful if you're a Collider fan to listen to them, and they have a very good perspective. Um, for so I, I encourage you guys to listen to it but yes yeah, some of the things they say is ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> to, to be clear I'm a fan of the show I yeah, listen yeah, I every week yeah, I, think, yeah. I think that's just yeah, the yeah, one, look, one point it's a great contention. show it's a great show they're both great on the mic and um, I'm happy to have them and I'm happy to have an element of Collider that can be like a mirror to us and you know 
I'll say it now. Um, there has been ideas that those guys have talked about that have influenced my thinking. Sure. You know, um, there's good ideas uh, in most places, and when somebody puts that much passion and energy, like like Ryan and Jay, Jay, just, just, yeah, yeah, just, right. let, me, let me do the names. <laughs> right, right. They they like, care though. They legit care. Oh, of course they care, and um, I love them for it, and that's why they'll always have a home here, um, despite of how effortless they think it is. <laughs> to do the things that do. Well, I think I speak on behalf of everybody. We gave Jay Williams a pretty effortless welcome when he came into the studio. <laughs> hey, I wasn't around. I'm going to address around. that on Collider Live. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> right, right. Like, uh, unbelievable. How are you people raised? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people that walk in here. They, they yeah, don't yeah. Adam. I mean, to I be, to, to be fair, fan. we don't know who's walking through the door every Friday. So. Yeah, right. yeah. Oh, that's true. Anyway. And by the way, for everybody who wants to walk through our doors at Collider, again, our home base, here's the address. It's in Cincinnati. <laughs> Come visit us anytime you want. A couple more questions, and then we will call today. This is a question that, again, like you see certain ones that I can't associate with a particular name because they pop up a lot, and it is in relation to Collider. Heroes, is there any special uh, thing that Quarter Heroes is looking to do to honor Schnepp in a way of um, either a rebranding or a naming or um, or something in that vein? I mean, obviously, my take on it is that John Schnepp is honored when we talk about comic books in general, when we have any conversation about it. Is there anything to uh, to hone in on that a little more? So, I um, personally speaking, I walk around um, thinking about ways to. Um, keep John around us in a very, very close way constantly. So step number, but you also have to be pragmatic about it because this is a long-term thing. This isn't like grieve for a few days and forget about it. This is something that's gonna be with us for the rest of our lives. This is who we are now. Um, so we also gotta be very pragmatic about it. And uh, step number one, and I, you know, every time I, th I think about this, I literally see him in my office. Um, the show must go on. He loved this show so much. Um, and it's my number one responsibility, it's step one, to just make sure that the show keeps operating in the way that he was so passionate about. Um, after we feel comfortable that that's on good footing, then we can start exploring other ideas. But this is a multi-year remembrance uh, with us. Uh, this isn't gonna end anytime soon. This is, this is who we are now. All right, uh, then we come to our ultimate question, or penultimate question, we might take another one after this, but I think it's a, it's a good way to, uh, to walk off, and that is from Chad Wyers, and he says, does Collider have any plans to celebrate once we hit 500,000 subscribers? Where are we at now? 490 something. 490. We're, we're close. Yeah, we're, we're close. close. Probably in yeah. a few weeks. The answer to that question is we have to knock on Fernandez's door and go, please, and he'll go, all right, fine, let's do something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, you're gonna be cagey about that one. Yeah. All right. Um, All right. Look, I think that uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Shaky's yeah. Pizza. Put your name on the market. <laughs> yeah. Same. Um, because I've not heard from Ryan and Jay, and I've not. Are you serious? Are they mad at the, 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 the joke? Work. Hold on. Yeah. yeah. You, to be you honest called the guy you. Jason Smelling. Yeah. Um, no, I did it. Did it. <laughs> you yeah. one Jason, one <laughs> Smelling. <laughs> <laughs> but something that I see, just for a quick recap before we say goodnight here, is uh, if we can just go around the panel and just talk about um, the show that maybe you're most excited to uh, to launch and get going, or that you heard about. Frosty, I'll start with you, and we'll go around the horn. Of course, it's starting with me. Uh, I I don't know that I necessarily have a number one show that I'm looking forward to. I'm actually, across the board, just incredibly excited for the variety of content that we're going to have. And what I also like is the fact that I know, based on the website, some people love reading the interviews and some people love watching the interviews. In an ideal world, I would have a way to transcribe every interview, but it's not like practical. But I like the fact that if you want the content as video or want the content as audio, both options will be made available to you. And I think that as we expand our staff and expand the company, the diversity of content, the amount of voices uh, that will be coming in, that's what excites me the most, is that it's just gonna be even bigger and better. I'm excited about all the stuff, but I'm particularly excited about Collider Quick because I think it's it's a place where a lot of the people that maybe you don't even see uh, on camera have their own ideas for, for segments and videos and shows that we can do so we can experiment with that. And, we, and I also want to give a shout out to the production team who are very hardworking, even though they make it look easy effortless. and effortless. <laughs> it is not easy and effortless to do what we do here every day. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, so for me, I mean, obviously, Cloud Alive is something I'm very excited about because it just, I think, f speaking for myself, I like to just kind of go gloves off and be, and that's why I've loved one on one so much that I can really learn about people and get into the who's who and not just be about movie stuff. And that's what I want to do. I like bringing out personalities and people and, and whether it's guests or people you know and, and, Obviously, their opinions is what built this channel on shows like Heroes and Movie Talk and, and Jedi Council. But there's so much more to these people than just their opinions on one particular story or genre. So I want to learn who they are as people. I want to have some fun. So that show is the one that I'm looking forward to the most as far as overall. It's the podcast YouTube channel. Um, I think there's so many opportunities. I think there's so many ways to bring in unique personalities and new shows that wouldn't be able to work here that will work there. And speaking of the podcast, by the way, Cloud Alive will have its own podcast feed. Um, we're working on getting that set up. And once it is, I'll tweet it out. Cloud will tweet it out. And you guys should um, subscribe, rate, do all that stuff too. Um, but yeah, those are the two that I'm really looking forward to because I think that um, I think that we have a lot of great things in store for all of it. Yeah, um, I think for me, something we haven't talked a ton about, even though we've seen a few commercials on it, is, uh, is Schmodown. You know, and I think Schmodown has continues to grow and continues to have a very, um, really powerful fan base, a very dedicated fan base, and a uh, a really dedicated, active community as well. Right, it's one thing to be a fan; it's another thing to be part of a community, because uh, being part of a community implies action. And there's a lot of action with the with the Schmodown folks. A team lot of action, after yeah. shows, team action. Yeah. Um, you know, um, but yeah. So I, I'm I'm actually really excited to see where that goes. And and one thing that we haven't talked a ton about, but that the Schmodown has really kind of illuminated us on, is the concept of doing more live stuff. You know, um, I know that this anarchy thing that happening in September is exciting, but that also opens the doors for other things that we that that maybe we can start doing live. You know, um, which we're exploring. Um, so for me, I'm most excited about our continued growth. You know, um, we have a we have an army, and we're gonna set the army on the field, and we're gonna keep trying to take territories, and we're gonna fight, and we're gonna meet resistance, and we're gonna keep trying. We're not gonna win every battle, but I guarantee you, we'll win some of them. And 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 those are the battles that we're gonna use to keep growing and building more forces on. So. Um, what is it? The wars, uh, winter is coming. Wars, whatever it is, it, we're, we're here and we're going to keep. Are fighting. you quoting Robert Frost or a Game of Thrones? <laughs> right. right. A mix. Right. Right. Either way, I am happy, and I know I speak for everybody here. I'm just uh, proud to be a small part in this rebellion. I am just one rebel scum that you can catch in Atlanta during Dragon Con doing stand up, <laughs> flying the Collider banner high. And I did text Ryan and Jay Williams. Now Ryan is currently uh, being like a good John Mellencamp fan. He's vacationing down in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, he really? But he did tell Dennis that he is available to do every show that he has come up with on Afterthoughts <laughs> here for Collider if that opportunity should It'll arise. And as for Jay Williams, he's actually in a business meeting right now. I don't know what he's talking about. I don't really? know where he is. He's in some sort of higher-ups office currently not doing his work and texting with me instead, but he did have one question, and that's going to be our goodbye question here. And it's something that I've seen a lot, and it's something that needs to be addressed, and I can't go a second more without asking it. Will we get air conditioning in the podcast studio? <laughs> That's a great question, especially for a Collider Live. Um, um, please look, and far, thank you. As far as, as far as I know, there is. I mean, look, Th there is air conditioning there is air in, air that, in that office. It's just a, a matter of. Can we get a snowblower? <laughs> there's just a, there's a, there's a, a duct issue right now up, yeah. up there. Yeah. There, there is AC in that room. It's right. just. Sometimes Can we get better AC, I think, was the question. <laughs> um, but I will say also, I think that um, I tweeted this. This is going into the Collider, uh, the uh, Schmodown Live real quick. So I want to give people the opportunity you're watching. Do you get the first opportunity? If you watch it in the replay, do it as well. I have a, um, I have a pinned tweet on um, my Twitter right now as far as the live thing. Tweet that, or quote tweet it, and I'm going to give away a code for um, the Blu-ray for Avengers Infinity War. Oh, um, nice. I actually I got saw it. that. I got it. I got, I got, yeah, the, I got really the Blu-ray, yeah. and I have it, so I will give away the code. All you got to do is go quote tweet it, what you like about the Schmodown, if they should go to the live event. I'll give one of those away quick. All right, it's good news. If you watch Harold Finellis, you know that Christian gets the Avengers Blu-rays and the Omaha Steaks. Yeah. What a guy. Yeah, because I actually gentlemen. emailed the studios. That is going to be it for Collider Town Hall. I want to throw it to the wide shot one more time to thank what? Christian and Mark. And, of course, it, we have one more post credit scene. Without further ado, <laughs> look, Mr. and also... I um I don't think you get enough credit, even though you get a lot of credit from the fans and everybody. 
um, the on. way the way that Mark <laughs> the way that Mark handled one of the toughest um, few weeks that I've had to experience in a very long time was like 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 a rock. Um, the way that he handles stuff like this is incredible. The way that he handles the show is incredible. Movie talk, and I'm just uh, I feel very lucky to have you as part of the team. We love you, buddy. I love you as well. Christian Dennis Frosty, your response. Uh, no. <laughs> not, not a fan. Not yeah. a fan. I, I actually disagree with Mr. Fernandez yeah. and uh, think that uh, a monkey could do your job. But if I was being serious, uh, yeah, you, you make it look really easy yeah. and it's really not. And I've always loved 70s shows, so it's good. You know, a kid raised by wolves, not too shabby. Thank you guys for tuning in to Collider Town Hall. You can continue to use the hashtag Collider Town Hall if you have any other questions, any other things you want to comment about what you just heard on the show. A lot of new announcements. It's a little bit of homework for y'all, but I do encourage you to do your due diligence when we get all these new channels launched. If it's games, if it's quick, sports, all the other things. And I want to thank Ryan for stopping by. Very excited about all the new wrestling content we're going to have. And that comes from a guy who didn't watch wrestling growing up. So thank you to Ryan, Frosty, Dennis, Christian, and especially our CEO, Mark Fernandez. Until our next town hall, we'll see y'all real soon here on Collider Video, and we'll see you at the 500,000 sub party. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode of Collider Movie Talk. You want to watch more? Then click up here or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. And if you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.